the one-way flight from the UK to Rwanda refugees arriving in the UK are being sent to Rwanda. Protesters demonstrate outside the Home Office in London, the UK. Protesters demonstrate outside the Home Office against the United Kingdom government's plans to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda, in London, the UK, June 13, 2022, Henry Nichols slash Reuters published on June 15, 2022. June 15, 2022. In this episode, Hamza Mukhtar Tijani, refugee from Darfur. Case Siddiqui, at Case Siddiqui, former Sudanese refugee, now immigration, public law and civil liberties solicitor, at Solicitors, in London. Bashir Mohammed, at Bashir underscore Kato, freelance journalist for Al Jazeera based in London. Michaela Rong, at Mitchell Lorong, journalist and author of four non fiction books and a novel on Africa. Episode credits. This episode was produced by Amy Walters, Ruby Zaman, Nay Alvarez, Nagin Alai, Alexandra Locke and Natasha Del Toro and for Malika Bilal. Our sound designer is Alex Rolden. Our engagement producers are Ayel Mylik and Adam Abu Gad. Connect with us. At Aja Podcasts on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook UK deportations to Rwanda stalled as European court steps in. The first chartered flight removing asylum seekers from the UK was due to depart for Rwanda on Tuesday. Members of staff board a plane at Boscombe Down Air Base in Wiltshire, UK. Members of staff board a plane reported by British media to be first to transport asylum seekers to Rwanda, at Boscombe Down Air Base in Wiltshire, UK, on June 14, 2022, Henry Nichols slash Reuters published on June 14, 2022. June 14, 2022. The United Kingdom's first flight to take asylum seekers to Rwanda has not taken off as scheduled after the European Human Rights Court issued last-minute injunctions to stop the deportation of the handful of people on board. The UK government's plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda on Tuesday had been heavily criticized by opponents, charities, and religious leaders who said the deportations were inhumane, and the government was forced to fight a series of legal challenges in London courts aimed at stopping the flight departing. Keep reading. List of two items. Lists one of two. UK court says flight taking asylum seekers to Rwanda can go ahead. List two of two. I'll take my life, UK refugees being deported to Rwanda despair. End of list. A handful of asylum seekers were scheduled to fly from an air force base in southwest England, but shortly before the plane was due to leave on Tuesday the European Court of Human Rights, ECHR, granted injunctions to prevent their deportations. I have always said this policy will not be easy to deliver and am disappointed that legal challenge and last-minute claims have meant today's flight was unable to depart, UK Home Secretary Preeti Patel said. It is very surprising that the European Court of Human Rights has intervened despite repeated earlier success in our domestic courts, Patel said. The Home Secretary said the government would not be deterred in its deportation plans and would prepare for the next flight. In the last few days, at least 30 individuals earmarked to be on the first flight successfully argued that they should not be deported to Rwanda on health or human rights grounds. The ECHR's ruling relating to one of the men due for deportation, an Iraqi, stated he should not be removed until the expiry of a period of three weeks following the delivery of the final domestic decision in the ongoing judicial review proceedings. The High Court in London is due to hold this judicial review in July to decide on the legality of the scheme. Last ticket cancelled. No one is going to Rwanda, the charity Care for Calais, which had launched legal action on behalf of a number of the refugees, said on Twitter. The government says the £120 million million deal struck with Rwanda to accept asylum seekers from the UK will undermine the business model of people smuggling networks. Judges in the UK on Monday rejected an appeal against the deportations. Those due to be deported include Albanians, Iraqis, Iranians and Assyrian. Care for Calais said. Protesters hold placards as they gather outside the Home Office in London. Protesters hold placards as they gather outside the Home Office in central London, Nicholas Hallin slash AFPUN refugee chief Filippo Grandi had earlier denounced the UK government policy as all wrong and said it should not be exporting its responsibility to another country. Church of England leaders, including the Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby, had also criticized the deportation plan as one that should shame us as a nation. Our Christian heritage should inspire us to treat asylum seekers with compassion, fairness and justice, 
as we have for centuries, Welby and 24 other bishops wrote in Tuesday's Times newspaper. This immoral policy shames Britain. Stopping traffickers. While some flight cancellations are unavoidable, the sheer number of delays and cancellations this past weekend raises questions about airline decision making, Senators Richard Blumenthal and Edward Markey wrote in a letter, dated June 2, according to Reuters. Recommended. Business News. Tesla worker rejects $15 million payout in race bias lawsuit. Travel. More than 1,300 Southwest Airlines pilots march on picket line, say they're overworked and underpaid. The day before, Delta CEO Ed Bastian told reporters in New York the airline was working to train new employees as we're seeing historic surging demand. While the roughly 2 million daily TSA passenger screenings is short of pre-pandemic levels, airlines are still recovering from capacity cuts they made during the pandemic. Combined with a wave of pilot retirements, it will likely take many more months for travel operations to stabilize, according to Kit Darby, president at Kit Darby. Com Aviation Consulting, LLC. Travelers should make use of their airlines and airports' smartphone apps, not to mention weather tracking apps, to get a sense of delays and wait times in advance, Darby said. The days where you could go out and catch a flight like a bus, a percentage of that is not going to work anymore, Darby said. Rob Weil. Rob Weil is a breaking business news reporter for NBC News Digital. By Tabula. Sponsored Stories. A waiver that exempts top Taliban officials from a long-standing United Nations travel ban and related sanctions is set to expire, with rights groups saying the restrictions should be reimposed based on the group's oppression of women since taking power last year. The United States has not given an official stance on the current extension, which reportedly is set to be discussed by the UN Security Council, UNSC, next week. It officially expires on Monday. Keep reading. List of three items. Lists one of three. Afghan women deplore Taliban's new order to cover faces in public. List two of three. Taliban enforces order for Afghan women TV anchors to cover faces. List three of three. Afghan female journalists defiant as Taliban restrictions grow. End of list. In 2019, at the behest of the administration of former U.S. President Donald Trump, the Security Council first waived the long-standing travel ban imposed on 41 Taliban officials to allow 15 leaders to travel for peace and stability discussions. That came amid negotiations between U.S. and Taliban officials in Doha, Qatar that culminated in a February 2020 deal in which Washington agreed to withdraw all troops and contractors from Afghanistan in exchange for guarantees U.S. personnel would not be attacked in the process. In September of 2021, Shortly after the Taliban took control of Afghanistan in a lightning-fast sweep across the country, the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden requested the first extension to the waiver. At the time, the U.S. mission at the U.N. told the Wall Street Journal that the waiver facilitated in-person communications between the Taliban and U.S. and other international officials, allowing us to state clearly our expectations for their behavior. The waiver was last extended for 90 days in March. Officials in the Biden administration remain starkly divided on how to proceed, with some arguing the waiver is essential to maintaining dialogue with the Taliban, according to Foreign Policy magazine. Others have expressed frustration with the Taliban's backsliding on human rights, particularly women's rights, and their failure to form an inclusive government, according to the magazine. Supporters of extending the exemption include Norway, a member of the UNSC and a penholder on the Afghan file meaning it leads negotiations and the drafting of resolutions related to the country. Oslo in January hosted intra-Afghan talks, including Taliban officials and Afghan civil society, aimed at alleviating the humanitarian crisis in the country. Henrik Thun, Norway's deputy foreign minister, told The Guardian newspaper in a statement that the travel ban exemption is first and foremost a tool to facilitate contact with the de facto authorities. In our opinion, this continues to be crucial if we want to influence the trajectory of the future of Afghanistan, he wrote. Opponents to extending the waiver include Heather Barr, the associate director of the Women's Rights Division at Human Rights Watch, who wrote in early June that the UNSC has an opportunity to refocus the ban on specific Taliban leaders who have been implicated in serious rights violations. She specifically identified three Taliban leaders as warranting special attention, Abdul Haq Wasik the head of the intelligence agency whose forces have carried out extrajudicial executions and detained and beaten journalists, Sheikh Mohammed Khalid Hanafi, 
the head of the Ministry for the Propagation of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice, who has imposed many of the most egregious restrictions on women and girls, and religious. Thousands more flights cancelled as Transportation Secretary meets with CEOs over summer air chaos. Weather and booming demand have made traveling more difficult than ever. Thousands of flights have been cancelled or delayed in the past 48 hours due to disruptive weather, leaving travelers across the U.S. stranded for hours as airlines, already strapped for personnel, face booming summer demand. More than 6,500 flights were scrapped Thursday and Friday, according to the data group Flight Aware while nearly 12,000 flights were delayed. The troubles came as storms gripped parts of the South and Northeast. Flights into and out of North Carolina's Charlotte Douglas International Airport were most affected, followed by airports in the New York, New Jersey area. The disruptions came as Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg met virtually late Thursday with airline CEOs to discuss ways to improve performance and operations. CNBC, quoting a source familiar with the talks, reported Buttigieg asked airlines what steps they were taking to ease disruptions, especially with the July 4th weekend approaching. We appreciated the opportunity to meet with Department of Transportation Secretary Buttigieg to discuss our shared commitment to prioritizing the safety and security of all travelers as they reunite with friends, family and colleagues this summer, Nicholas Calio, CEO of Airlines for America, which represents large U. S. Carriers, said in a statement according to CNBC. The summer travel season kicked off inauspiciously, as some 2,700 flights were cancelled over Memorial Day. That came as airlines like Delta said they were cancelling as many as 100 daily departures this summer. The developments prompted two U.S. Senators to send a letter to Buttigieg asking how airlines were being held accountable. While some flight cancellations are unavoidable, the sheer number of delays and cancellations this past weekend raises questions about airline decision-making, Senators Richard Blumenthal and Edward Markey wrote in a letter, dated June 2, according to Reuters. Recommended Business News Tesla worker rejects $15 million payout in race bias lawsuit Travel More than 1,300 Southwest Airlines pilots march on picket line, say they're overworked and underpaid. The day before, Delta CEO Ed Bastian told reporters in New York the airline was working to train new employees as we're seeing historic surging demand. While the roughly 2 million daily TSA passenger screenings is short of pre-pandemic levels, airlines are still recovering from capacity cuts they made during the pandemic. Combined with a wave of pilot retirements, it will likely take many more months for travel operations to stabilize, according to Kit Darby, president at Kit Darby. Com Aviation Consulting, LLC Travelers should make use of their airlines and airports' smartphone apps, not to mention weather tracking apps, to get a sense of delays and wait times in advance, Darby said. The days where you could go out and catch a flight like a bus, a percentage of that is not going to work anymore, Darby said. Rob Weil Rob Weil is a breaking business news reporter for NBC News Digital. By Tabula Sponsored Stories